Welcome back to EPM Org, Evangelist Pilgrim Missions. I hope everyone has had a wonderful and peaceful week on your journey with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us take a moment to pray. Heavenly Father, we are gathered here today to worship your everlasting love, a love so very strong that you gave your only begotten Son for our sins. Lord Jesus, watch over our family, our church family, our friends, our community, our great state, country, and the planet that you created, Lord. Be in our presence today and touch someone's heart, Lord, that is in desperate need to feel your love and presence today. As we lift our hands to you today, Lord, <clears throat> embrace our worship to you on this very day, for there is no other God greater than you. For this we pray today, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus we pray today. Amen. Today we are going to start somewhat of a little mini-series. And the mini-series is titled, Keep Asking, Seeking, Knocking, and Going. It'll be a four-part mini-series. For each and every one of us around the world keeps asking ourselves, what's next? What if? Can it really be? Is this all that's left? And how can I get up? ever go on for each and every one of us keep knocking at the next door hoping the next door answers all of our prayers all of our ambitions in hopes to find happiness and our place in the world each and every one of us that comes through all that keep going putting one foot in front of the other. And even if you don't believe in the higher power, you still to this day keep putting one foot in front of the other to keep going. For we can ask, we can seek, and we can knock. But we must keep going. For our Father in heaven would hate to see one of his children give up. We must keep going day in and day out, matter what lies before us in our road on our journey on earth. Today, let's first start by talking about keep asking. For it's written in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 7 and 8, Ask and it will be given to you. For everyone who asks receives. But how does one ask? Well, we can learn to ask and how to pray if we learn how Daniel prayed many moons ago. First off, Daniel decided to pray. A life of prayer comes about by making the decision to spend time in prayer. Number two, make a schedule. Daniel prayed to God three times a day, every day, in Daniel 6.10. And three, be consistent in your prayer. When you start a schedule and you decide to pray, be consistent in your prayer. And four, know your identity. Know exactly what you are praying for. Be prepared to pray at your scheduled time. 
be consistent and do it as scheduled and know your identity in prayer. Know what you're trying to pray for. And fifth, stand firm in your faith. One must be firm in their faith for Jesus to answer your prayer. And six, look to Jesus. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our Father in heaven, our Abba, the one and only, wants you to pray to him. Wants you to keep your faith, know your identity, be consistent in speaking with him, make a schedule, and be prepared to pray and decide to pray to him. For you see, Daniel was consistent in his prayer life. He was praying in the hope of the deliverance of his nation, of Jerusalem in particular, yet he never wavered. And even when he was faced with the penalty of death, he continued with his commitment to pray three times a day. We can use the five P's of prayer, like Daniel, in our prayer life. So once you decide to pray, you make a schedule, and all the rest of them six first six steps, you can use these next five to develop your prayer life with Jesus Christ. Number one, promise. God's promise provides restoration and rebuilds our lives, our finances, our mental and emotional states, and our lands. And six, praise. As we praise God for his compassion and mercy, we change our mindsets to listen to him, and we give God the glory that he, he alone can give. And pe- number three, petition. We bring our request to God for the forgiveness of sin. We turn back to him and his word. We tell him that we need to ask him to heal our land. And four, position. By turning from our sins, we place ourselves in favor of God. We pursue the insights into God's truth, not that we think is our reality, we abandon the world's devious ways of us against them for God's ways of mercy and grace. And five, purpose. God answers our prayers with insight and understanding of our times. He offers it, and we must accept it. As we let God's love and grace fill us, we find joy in the peace instead of fear and anxiety. Now in Daniel 9, chapter 9, verse 19, it reads, O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, listen and act. Do not delay for your own sake. My God, For your city and your people are calling your name. And in the book of Luke, chapter 18, verses 9 through 14, we come to the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. And also he spoke this parable to some of who he trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray one a Pharisee, and one the other one a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortionists, unjust, adulterers, or even as a tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess, And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, 
God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than other. And for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. This parable helps support praying like Daniel as we must be praying in the right mind and for the right reason. For if we aren't praying for our very soul, God will not receive and answer our prayer accordingly or as we hoped he would. But remember, when you are praying, so it is written in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 7. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions, as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Charles Stanley is quoted by saying, God is honored by large, difficult and impossible requests. When we ask, Seek, knock, keep going, and trust our beloved Abba, always to answer for good. Amen. Keep asking, and you will receive. Our Heavenly Father awaits for each and every one of his children today to turn back to him and ask, O oh, Heavenly Father, forgive us for our sins. For we know that the road that we've traveled along our journey on earth that you created for us, Lord, has been a broken road but you've given us northern stars to lead us home. In each and every one of us, you are building a room for in heaven. And there will be a place at the table, at our Father in heaven's table, for each and every one of us one day. As long as we choose him in return, for Jesus Christ has already chosen you before you were ever born. Choose him today. There's no day better than today. Take that first step. Decide to pray. Make a schedule. Be consistent. Know what you're praying for. Praise God for everything that you've been given. For we came into this world naked, born from our mother's womb, the greatest gift known to man. And oh, how God has taken care of us each and every step of the way. How much he's blessed us in our life by the things he's given us. Choose Jesus today. Confess your sins with repentance. Be baptized in the name of Jesus. And let your sins be washed away through baptism via immersion. And be buried like Jesus in the water. And just like Jesus raised again a new life. And let the Holy Ghost fall upon you like it did on the day of Pentecost. The day the church was born. Amen.
keep asking. That's the first step on your road back to Jesus Christ. Until next time, God bless.